What's up guys, Ozzy here. And I have built a lot of computers in my lifetime. And several of the computers that I've built, I've documented on this channel, many of which are 300 bucks or less. And because of my quote unquote, expertise in the affordable gaming computer arena, I get a lot of questions pertaining to how to build an affordable gaming computer for 300 bucks or less. Often my Twitter and my comments are flooded with questions such as, I have 200 bucks for a computer, does this look good? Or what's the best console killing machine they can build right now? Or what should I do about the mining craze? I only had 300 or so bucks to spend and because of the mining craze, I have to wait. So I'm gonna see if I can answer all of these questions with one simple formula. It's a very simple and standard formula that you've probably seen in almost every single super budget gaming computer on YouTube. And that's basically buy a pre-built computer and install a video card. So yeah, that's pretty much the too long didn't read version of this video. If you have 300 bucks or less and you want a machine that's capable of some type of gaming, then your best bet is to buy a pre-built machine and then buy the best video card that you can afford. So technically you can stop the video right here and then kind of know all you need to know, but I do have some more useful information that can kind of help you on your journey to building a $300 gaming computer. And of course you have other options as well. You can wait and save up and then pick up something better than a pre-built plus like a GTX 1050 for instance. You can also buy a console instead and you can also deal hunt like crazy and then wait for rebates to spawn up and then buy your parts as you go. Now this video is pretty much assuming that one, you're not in a position to save up or saving up takes up a lot of time. I totally understand. I've been a 15 year old kid who wants to play PC games yeah, it's, it's pretty tough. Two, you don't want to get a console or you already have a console and you don't want to sell it. You just kind of want to make that really smooth transition into PC gaming without breaking the bank. And three, deals are not very prevalent in your area or you just don't want to wait for deals. And then that goes back to the fact that, you know, you don't have that much time. So if you fit into any of these three categories and yeah, keep watching and I can give you some tips and tricks if you want to build a computer that's capable of gaming for 300 bucks or less. So my first tip is that you should buy a pre-built computer with upgradeability in mind. And by upgradeability, I don't mean future-proofing your PC because that should be the last thing you're doing if you have a budget of 300 bucks or less, but I just mean keep in mind that, you know, computers don't last forever and if you want to have some kind of longevity with your $300 gaming computer, then you should keep in mind that you want it to be somewhat upgradable. The first step when buying a pre-built computer and having some kind of upgradability is to avoid slim towers as best as you can. Now slim towers are generally a little bit cheaper than mid towers or bigger towers and that's because of their abundancy in the used market. And the reason why I say avoid slim towers is because of two things. One, they usually have some kind of small form factor power supply which it's kind of hard to replace, and if you do replace it, you will be paying a price premium. And two, they only support very specific low profile cards. And now there's nothing wrong with low profile cards, but again, you're gonna be paying a price premium for that small form factor. So if you have the chance, spend the extra 10 to 15, maybe 20 bucks for some kind of mini tower or mid tower that has the standard ATX power supply, and that can support full length cards, or at least, shorter cards, just not ones that are only low profile because that will cut you down your possibilities by a ton. My second tip is to check the power supply and upgrade if possible. And again, this is why using a non-SIM tower case is very crucial because upgrading the power supply in a non-SIM tower case is going to be easier and much cheaper than upgrading one in a slim tower case. So keep that in mind. You can pick up a 30 to $40 decent power supply off Newegg, Amazon, wherever and then pop that in if you have a non sim tower case. And that gives you way more upgradability than if you use the usually anywhere between 200 watt to 300 watt power supply that comes with a pre-built computer. My third point is to go Intel and not avoid AMD, but just know that you will have better opportunities with an Intel pre-built machine than with an AMD pre-built machine. Chances are, if you do pick up an AMD pre-built machine, it's either gonna be using a Phenom 2 quad core or some kind of iteration of the Phenom 2 series, which is pretty old by today's standards. It can work, but again, the upgrade path isn't there. And two, it's gonna be using an FX chip, which 
Again, it can work, but Intel offers way better price to performance in pre-built machines than an FX CPU in a pre-built machine. Two, it's a pretty crummy architecture by today's standards. And three, the upgrade path is pretty bad as well. To add to my third point, I highly recommend going for a second generation Core i CPU if you're in the 180-ish to $300 range. I wouldn't settle for a Core 2 Quad, Core 2 Duo, or a Pentium or a Celeron or a first generation Core i CPU. And that's because the upgrade path really isn't there for them. And also because they're older architecture, which will definitely show its age in newer titles, such as Player Unknown's Battleground for instance. Now my very last point for this third point that I mentioned earlier is you should have at least four gigabytes of memory. Now I recommend a minimum of eight if you want to play newer titles and have a smoother experience but I also understand that this is a $300 or less computer so if four is the maximum you can go then go with four and upgrade later if not at least get eight you will be thanking yourself later. Now, just to show you guys how quick and easy it is to actually get this set up and ready to go, I have a few examples, not so live, but I made this about an hour or two before recording this video, of $300 computers, $200 computers, and about $170 computers that are capable of playing mainstream games today. Now, the very first one is a Dell i5 desktop, and I believe it's the i5-3550, but if not, I'll make a note of it in the video. And I paired it with an RX 5 60, which goes for about 100 to 110 bucks and then an EVGA 450 watt power supply that was about 31 bucks shipped from Newegg. The combined total of this is just under 300 bucks. You get yourself a second generation i5. You get yourself, I think, 500 gigabytes of hard drive space. I don't have it in front of me, so I'm just trying to reel this off memory. And you get eight gigs of RAM and an RX 560. That is a very good deal. If your budget is closer to 200 bucks, then you can do an i3 desktop, the same power supply, and then something along the lines as an R9 270, which is a a good bit faster than the 750Ti. On eBay, this one is like 76 bucks, if I believe, and that is pretty awesome performance. So the $200 version is pretty much the same as the $300 version minus the CPU, but in most games, you're gonna get around the same performance. So that's an entry-level gaming computer for 200 bucks. I think that's pretty phenomenal. And again, that only took me about 30 to maybe 40 minutes of research to put everything in my cart and be ready to check it out. And lastly, we have the $170 computer. It is the i3 again, but instead I'm not gonna change out the power supply and I put a GT1030 in there, which is about 76 bucks. I think you can find a cheaper version on Newegg because I bought mine for about like 72 bucks shipped. That's after taxes and everything. But again, $170 and you get yourself a half decent entry level gaming computer. Now this doesn't have the best price to performance. The $200 one easily has the best price to performance. But again, all of these are options that you can choose from and you can pick and choose how you like. And if you want to do the i3 and then maybe bump up the video card to like a GTX 1050 Ti, you can do that because you have that upgrade path for you and you don't have to worry about that small form factor that Slim Towers have. And on top of all of this, just make sure you also check local deals because I found out that local deals are pretty awesome and they're much better than like eBay deals because you do have that eBay and PayPal tax on top of everything that's holding you down. Also check out Reddit's Hardware Swap, check out Slick Deals, check out pretty much every single deal site that you can find and you can build yourself a $300 gaming computer. So if you guys are interested and if I get enough people rallying behind the idea of a $200 gaming computer, an updated version, kind of like the Ozbox version 2.0 that almost anyone can build, then just let me know. I can try to order it and I can set that up because I think that'll be pretty cool and helpful to a lot of people. But yeah, and that's it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Uh, if you liked it, then leave a like. And if you loved it, subscribe and share because I have a lot of videos like this one coming out in the near future. If you guys are interested, I also have a Patreon. The link is down in the description. It's only $1 and you get pretty much all of my Patreon updates and posts. So that's it and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.